Hey everyone, and welcome to Boston Auto Blog. Recently, we've been taking a look at new brands on the channel, and today is no different as we're taking a look at the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. Over the last handful of years, Mitsubishi has experienced a resurgence here in the United States. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that Mitsubishi committed themselves to the crossover segments that are dominating the automotive industry. So today, we're gonna check out one of the more affordable options in the subcompact crossover segment, and see why it might be the perfect crossover for you. Now before I get in this review, I'd like to thank Central Mitsubishi in Raynham, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Mitsubishi inventory. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. Over the last 10 years, we've watched brands transform, changing their entire lineups and going in a completely new direction that appeals to consumers of the 21st century. Mitsubishi is one of those manufacturers that we often associate with the Japanese sports car era of the 90s with the Eclipse and Lancer Evolution. Today, Mitsubishi has been revitalized with a lineup primarily dominated by crossovers that have brought new energy for the brand providing affordability to a segment that often seems to get more expensive each passing year. The Outlander Sport is one of those vehicles that's introduced new drivers to the Japanese manufacturer, and despite fundamentally going unchanged over the last 10 years, a refresh has modernized the subcompact crossover, giving it more youthful aesthetics. In terms of dimensions, the Outlander Sport comes in with a length of 172 inches, a width of 71 inches, and a height of 65 inches, which is almost identical to its sibling, the Eclipse Cross, and is around the same size as most vehicles in its class. More importantly is the standard ground clearance of 8.5 inches, which outcompetes many rivals in this subcompact crossover segment, adding versatility during the winter months. When taking a look at the road presence, Mitsubishi's new Dynamic Shield front fascia finally gets integrated into the Outlander Sports design, helping it fit in better with the current lineup of crossovers. Very rare to see in this price range, let alone the segment the Outlander Sport is in, are LED headlights which come standard for all models, even for the ES trim. With this new look, the turn signal indicators are housed along with the fog lights on the lower portion of the front bumper. Taking the styling of this vehicle in a whole new direction is the addition of chrome accents and cladding, bringing some aggressive styling cues to this crossover. Moving over to the side profile, the ES trim will be sitting on 5-spoke 18-inch alloy wheels, which will be present across most trims for the Outlander Sport. You will get body color folding side mirrors, and unlike on the higher trims, the turn signal indicators will be incorporated into the plastic cladding design found near the front wheel wells. Then coming around to the back, not much has changed from the prior model year, as most cosmetic upgrades for the Outlander Sport are found up front. There will be a slightly different taillight design, and just like with the headlights, those taillights will be LED, which once again is not very common in this class, particularly for a base model. For performance, the Outlander Sport ES is powered by a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine that puts out 148 horsepower and 145 pound-feet of torque and is paired with the CVT. For the drivetrain, front-wheel drive does come standard, but for an additional $1,500, you will get all-wheel drive as an option. And for fuel efficiency, you can expect to receive right around 24 miles per gallon in the city and 30 miles per gallon on the highway 
with those numbers slightly differing if you do go with that all-wheel drive system. Inside, you're greeted by manually adjustable fabric seats for both the driver and passenger. As part of the optional $850 convenience package, these seats will be heated as well for added comfort during the colder months. In front of you, between the analog gauges, a digital display which will be showing fuel economy statistics can be found here. On the ES, there's not as much functionality as you'd find on higher trims, and no ability to scroll through different information or menus from this screen. Moving over to the infotainment system, the model we have today is equipped with a 7-inch touchscreen with Bluetooth connectivity. The convenience package will give you the upgraded 8-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. From this screen, you can adjust the display and Bluetooth settings, and overall, it's a responsive system despite being very minimalistic. And of course, you will get a rear backup camera. Below, you'll find the dials for your climb control and fan settings, along with the USB input and 12 volt outlet. What did surprise me though, was the soft touch leather trim padding for the center console, which did provide a nice sense of quality for the interior. And rounding out the front seating area, for the center storage compartment, you'll find enough room for a smartphone and smaller items. Now for passengers in the back, we're gonna start off with the passenger side, and I adjusted the seat all the way back. It's also somewhat on a recline, and I still have room to work with. Now obviously, I am not the tallest adult out there. I'm around 5'5". However, I do have a story about this vehicle. So because the Outlander Sport has not changed at all in terms of being on a new platform in the last 10 years, um, I actually was in an Outlander Sport in 2011 in my senior year of high school. A friend of mine owned one, and I was in the back seat with two other people. So let's see if that's still the case and if you can still fit three people back here. So for the center seat, the rear hump is not that aggressive at all. There is some decent placements for my feet, most importantly. And even with the rear seat or this seat adjusted all the way back, and even though the driver's seat is still adjusted to someone of my height, I'm still comfortable. I'm not, I don't feel cramped or squished. And I think even if the seat was adjusted all the way back, I still have some knee room to work with. So I think back here, you could definitely fit a third person, but because of this vehicle size and the segment that it's in, most likely you're gonna fit just two people back here comfortably. And then, for the driver's side, I adjusted the seat to someone of my height, around 5'5", and I have plenty of legroom to work with. Now, also more importantly is headroom, and I have to say, with some vehicles in this segment, you might have to slouch a bit, but I do think for someone around maybe 5'9", 5 5'10", 5 they could definitely be comfortable back here. And then rounding out the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now, for rear cargo space, you can expect to receive right around 21.7 cubic feet, of rear cargo room, which is right in line with most of its competition. What I do like though is you have side pockets on either side of the floor, so if you have any smaller items or maybe even detail equipment, maybe bottles of water, you don't need to worry about that spilling onto your more valuable items that you're gonna have back here. And then with the rear seats folded down, that space more than doubles in size to 50 cubic feet of rear cargo room. So this vehicle is very practical for a number of different consumers. I'd like to think because this vehicle is so affordable, it's perfect for younger consumers who might be moving into their first ever apartment or maybe a dorm, and this is their first ever vehicle that they're buying new. And then underneath the floor, you will find a spare tire as well. So if you do uh, deal with the flat, you can fix it. You can be back on the road. So. Definitely like the setup that, that uh, Mitsubishi has right here. It's very practical, and I think if you are a person that is gonna be carrying furniture or any other items with you all the time, this definitely works. Now, at the end of the day, there's two points that I wanna make about the Outlander Sport ES. One being, you get a very great warranty of 10 years, 100,000 miles, and you also get a pretty good price. So around $24,000, you get into a subcompact crossover, but you can build your way up through the trims, and you can pay around 28,000 for a well-equipped Outlander Sport. So if you are looking at buying your first ever vehicle, wanna get into a crossover, also another too, if you're looking for a warranty and a really good warranty, then Mitsubishi is offering both. I also wanna point out that yes, this is an ES trim, but we are gonna build our way up through the Mitsubishi lineup, check out numerous trims, and provide you guys with a lot of value and information so you guys can make the right decision when buying a new Mitsubishi. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys next time.